With dashboards, one of the most critical things is that you must, first of all, think about what the dashboard must do. Think about what it is you're wanting to model, what it is you're wanting to see before you go to Excel. Is it that I wanted to model incentives? If so, what aspects of the incentive? Do I want it to analyze the sales comp plan? Do I want it to present market pricing information or to, to do labor turnover or headcount? What needs to be in there and what doesn't need to be in there? So what do I want it to do? Because it can't be everything to everybody. The second thing is go to managers and ask them what information do you want to see? Like you might send out a big report to them every month. Well, who says they even read that report? Who says they open it? What do they want to see? So say you're producing this really big headcount, labor turnover, absenteeism report. Go to your manager and say, you get this big report every month, now what part of it do you use? And he'll say, well, I'm in marketing, what I want to know is what was my headcount for the last six months? Um, or where do I have the highest absenteeism? Or you know, do I have a problem with my sales plan in this particular region or job or whatever? So, so ask them what it is they want to see and then design the dashboard to do that. Number three is draw it. Really important, people think I'm an Excel nerd and I do everything in Excel, but I draw my dashboards first. And I often sit, I know this is weird, but I sit in coffee shops and draw them because that's a good place to think. So if you see me in a coffee shop, I'm usually sketching on a piece of paper and drawing a dashboard. And I'll often do five versions of it and I keep drawing it and drawing it and drawing it until such time as I know, yes, that's what needs to go in the dashboard. And often you say, no, it's too cluttered. Take it out, I can't fit all of that in. So, and if you're with a team of people, then draw it on a flip chart together, design it on a whiteboard together, but draw it. Number four is that you actually go and you, you, you kind of mark up the rows and columns. So you see, okay, I need to have this in, so what rows and columns do they need to be in there? So you literally go down to saying, well, this is gonna be in this row, this is gonna be in this column, you do that. Then once you've done that, only once you've done that, so you've got to that level, then you go into Excel and you say, okay, well, do I want this to print to one page? In which case you go and you set print area for one page. You see the space you've got. Do I want it to fit on my screen? In which case you work to your screen size and you fit it to your screen size. And the next step you do is where you need to have interactive fields. You put those in the dashboard where you need people to put in something that changes. But if it's going to be output, say you want to produce a table, then what you do is you do that somewhere else and you use a really nifty thing called the camera tool and this camera tool actually takes a photograph of the table and brings it into your dashboard but it's an interactive photograph. So all you do in your dashboard is you leave a space and you say that's where the table's going to go and then you almost like photograph it and bring it in. And that enables you to put lots of different tables in your dashboard without having to line up all those rows and columns. So you develop all your tables elsewhere, you bring them into the dashboard using the camera tool, and then the last step is that you go and unprotect the fields where people need to enter data, protect everything else, and then you can use it.